Hi guys, this is a review video on Thermo 1 and 2 from week 1 of Biochem. Well, let's get into it, I'm making this video to really help myself, but maybe you'll find it useful for you. Alright, so the goals from this week are really to understand that biochemistry is about studying reactions within the human body, and that many of those reactions are non-spontaneous. And so, as a result, they'll need to be coupled with uh, reactions that will provide energy to the non-spontaneous reaction so that the non-spontaneous reaction can proceed. And so we have a couple of supporting concepts from this week, the law of thermodynamics, the different laws of thermodynamics, enthalpy, the type of reactions, Gibbs free energy, and spontaneity of the reaction. So let's just get into it, starting with the law of thermodynamics. This is really all about energy, perhaps the most fundamental law of physics, which is the first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. And we think of energy as the ability to cause change. Uh, and so every time we see change occur in the world around us, this is a result of energy going from one object to the next or from one form to the next. It's the universe's accounting system. I like to think of it as the money system of the universe. Right? If you want something to happen, energy has to go, uh, has to trade hands. Then we have the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, this is the idea that the energy disposal, the entry dispersal, uh, energy dispersal of the entire universe uh, will increase over time. And so what this gives us is a pretty powerful predictor tool, which is uh, whether or not a reaction is spontaneous is whether or not the products have greater energy dispersal than the reactants. And so if the change in entropy is positive, then we know that the reaction is spontaneous. And this concept is why we later get, when you have a change in Gibbs free energy being negative, that is spontaneous, right? This Gibbs free energy, that delta G being negative, meaning spontaneity, really comes from this guy. Okay, the second law of thermo. All right, so if you take a quick look, quick example, uh, why is glucose combustion a spontaneous reaction? Well, we're going from a solid, that's fairly ordered, low energy dispersal, uh, and a gas to a gas and a gas. And so you can see overall that the um, energy is more dispersed as you go from, you know, relatively ordered to a whole bunch of molecules just bouncing around all over the place. And so you'd say that the products have greater energy dispersal than the reactants, and so you have a spontaneous reaction overall. All right, then we have enthalpy. Enthalpy is the heat content of the system. Uh, we look at it specifically from the point of view of how the enthalpy changes as a reaction proceeds, and so that allows us to classify two types of reactions. We have en exothermic reactions, uh, which is reactions that give off heat, and endothermic reactions, reactions that take in heat. And so um, here's two examples. We're given delta H is equal to positive uh, 181 kilojoules. We know that delta H is final minus initial. So if it's positive, that means the reactants, the products must have more heat content than the reactants. And as a result, we'd say that this reaction has gained heat. You could rewrite it like this, and that would match this equation over here. This must be endothermic. And you guys are familiar with this, so you could do the second one on your own, but this is, of course, exothermic. Great, not too bad. Certainly Gen Chem review stuff. Then we have Gibbs free energy. This is the energy that a system has that is free or available to do work, which is the same thing as saying cause change. Uh, and we know from the second law, of thermodynamics, the entropy of the universe always increases, and that gives us, you know, the condition for spontaneity. Uh, and so we can say that if the products have less energy available to do work than the reactants did, that means that energy dispersal must have increased, right? That energy has gone somewhere. It's gone to the universe. Um, the entropy of the universe has increased. Therefore, if delta G is negative, then our reaction is spontaneous. Likewise, if it's positive, our reaction is non-spontaneous. And then we're given the following equation um, relating enthalpy change to entropy change uh, to Gibbs free energy. 
Uh, this is something that you need to know. Certainly practice this table on your own, but I'm not going to spend time on it. Uh, go ahead and practice it yourself. Then we have standard Gibbs free energy. This is a measure. It's really Gibbs free energy at standard conditions. So it's the energy available to do work when you're at standard conditions, which are one ATM, that's a typo, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, and at a concentration of uh, molarity of one for your products and reactants. Okay, but specifically, it is Gibbs free energy, it's just at standard conditions. I think that was a little bit confusing from lecture, but it gives us some important equations, which is the Gibbs free energy, the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to the change in Gibbs free energy at standard conditions, uh, plus really this, I would say like a fudge factor, the change in free energy you get from not being at standard conditions, all right? And then we have a special case, which is uh, if you're at equilibrium, the change in Gibbs free energy overall is zero, right? Our reaction is proceeding towards products and reactants at the same rate. Uh, so it doesn't have any energy available to do work. And if we plug it into this equation, we get this delightful form of the equation, which is the standard Gibbs free energy is equal to negative RT natural log of Q, KQ, the equilibrium constant. And if you were to go ahead and rewrite that, this is a typo, uh, you get the following shortcut equation, which is good to know for our test, and then also good to know for uh, memorizing for the MCAT. And then allows us to go ahead and estimate delta G naught and estimate KEQ. And let's just take a look at a quick example. So estimate delta G naught, if you're given a KEQ equals 100, well, just quickly remind ourselves of the following log property. Log base 10 of 10 raised to the x is equal to x. All right, this is just something you have to know. And we use this fact to plug into our equation. If we have a KEQ of 100, well, that's really 10 to the 2, right? So delta G naught is equal to negative 1.36 uh, log base 10 of 10 to the 2. And we look up here. Well, that means that this term evaluates to 2. So we have negative 1.36 times 2, and we can estimate delta G naught as negative 2.72. All right, going in the reverse direction, if we know our delta G naught is negative 2.72, well, we just did this problem, so we know it's 100, but let's take a look at it. Uh, we divide by negative 1.36 on both sides. We get that's equal to 2. So this term KQ is going to be KQ equals 10 to the x, um, and we know that, yikes, this is very confusingly written, um, this is going to end up being 10 to the 2, so kq is equal to 100. All right, then if we expand on this a little bit further, um, under non-standard conditions, if we manipulate this equation, uh, plug in our shortcut right here, we can get this sort of ultimate shortcut equation for non-standard condition change in Gibbs free energy. This is just something to memorize. Uh, but it does allow us to predict spontaneity for with numbers for a hypothetical reaction. So, uh, you know, prove it to yourself. Take a look at this. If you plug in the reaction quotient, uh, 5 divided by the equilibrium constant, you can see that this evaluates to 5 times 10 to negative 1. We use the properties of logs, which is if you have a number multiplied by another number inside of the log parentheses, the same thing as addition. And you can see that this overall term becomes negative, and therefore this reaction must be spontaneous. Great. Okay, late strat layers principle, we're very familiar with this. Um, so I, I think the important thing to remind ourselves here is if you're given an equation, how do you write the equilibrium constant? Well, it's just the products divided by the reactants, and then you put the uh, coefficient as the exponent, okay? And then the reaction quotient is the exact same thing, but at non-equilibrium conditions. Okay, and then based on that, uh, you know, prove yourself that each of these is true. Uh, which direction the reaction will shift, and then you're like, okay, well, what does that say about spontaneity? Well, if it's the reaction is written like this, and you're saying that Q is greater than KQ, 
then the reaction is going to shift to the left. So we would say that, you know, as written, as written, this is non-spontaneous. Here, the conditions are such that Q is less than KQ, so the reaction is going to shift to the right. This would be spontaneous. And then again, as written is the keyword, right? Because this situation could be spontaneous if we had, say, flipped the equation. And we would say that under these conditions right here, um, all right, the conditions that define that value of Q, then you could have the reaction be spontaneous. All right, this one, just practice Lachite layers principle. All right, uh, this one, combining reactions, is, again, just this whole concept is just general chem review, but good way to start off a biochem class. Uh, if you have two chemical reactions adding together to get a third chemical reaction, the idea is that uh, when you add them up, if you have to flip a um, one of the constituent reactions, then the corresponding sort of, we'll say K2 final is just 1 over K2, and the total equilibrium constant is going to be equal to uh, the KQs multiplied together, and we see that this is 1 over K2 because we had to flip this one as a result of the reaction itself being flipped. Okay, and then what's the K uh, delta G naught resultant? Well, we take, if we were to plug in this equation right here, we would say we have K1 divided by K2, and we use our property of logs to plug in, and we see that whenever you have something divided by another thing inside of a log, you end up getting uh, two terms minus each other. And so you could use that to calculate delta G naught. All right, same thing over here. Uh, but in this example, we do not have to flip either of these two equations. So you can see that KQ is just K1 times K2. All right, and then you can look at this one yourself. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to continue doing these based on time. I'm trying to figure out the best way to study for biochem. But good luck, guys. You know, this is hard stuff. I think we're doing awesome. Yeah.